Warner Media, the parent company of CNN, has named its new CEO. Jason Kyler is the founding chief executive of Hulu. He begins in May, and that will be just in time for the launch of the new flagship streaming service, HBO Max. Kyler replaces John Stanky, who now serves as chief operating officer and president of Warner Media's parent, of course, which is AT&T. Jason now joins me from Hillsborough, California. John Stanky is in Dallas, in Texas. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I wish that we were talking on happier occasions, but thank you for both for, for making time to talk to us. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, I, I want to start, though, first with, with you, with John Stanky. Uh, before we look at the whole picture of Warner Media, let's just talk about AT&T. Give us an update, please, on how the company is performing and how, how stressed they are in, in this time of difficulty. Hi, Richard. Thanks for having us on today. I hope you're well and healthy. And uh, I would tell you, in terms of how AT&T is faring right now and in very unfortunate circumstances, I couldn't be more pleased, frankly, with how the core part of the operation is performing and, and serving our customers and carrying you know, the all-important data and voice traffic around the globe that people need right now. And I'm so proud of my coworkers that are coming in every day and ensuring that these networks stay up and running. Um, we've seen unprecedented volumes across virtually every network, whether it's wireless or fixed line consumer customers or even the largest, you know, global businesses. And I'd say by and large, other than a few hiccups here and there, I couldn't have asked for things to go smoother or better relative to how that's been uh, uh, faring. And, and, and John Sankey, why the decision to change in the middle of this crisis? Obviously, it was in the works before, and obviously, you must have considered whether to delay. Why did you decide that Jason should start right at the middle of the crisis? Well, hopefully, we're going to give Jason a little bit of a respite here, and I think we've announced that he'll be effective on the 1st of May, and I'm, I'm an optimist, and I'm somewhat hopeful that by the time we roll into May, maybe we're starting to work back to getting our, our normal sea legs about us and get our footing about us and, and that he'll be able to come in at, at a little bit quieter time. And in the meantime, you know, my role is to continue to, to shepherd the organization through this, this unprecedented moment. But, you know, I think you touched on it, Richard. It, the world goes on, the business goes on. And, um, you know, this is something that has been in the works for a period of time. And, um, you know, we do things in this company that are critical whether it's a time of crisis or a time of calm. And uh, the fact that we have a, you know, a great streaming service coming out in May, as you talked about, I think that's something that even if people are stuck at home could be a really good thing for them, along with all the critical communications that the networks provide. So we're continuing to push ahead, keep the business focused and do as much as we can uh, under these circumstances. So uh, Jason will be ready and raring to go the day he comes in here. All right, Jason, you're with us as well. Now, what do you see as your main challenge once you start as head of Warner Media? Uh, one assumes you've had a plan that you've put forward to the board. So, so tell us, where, what's our weak points? Well, I, I wouldn't say the weak points, but I think uh, the challenge will be, uh, and this is not unique to the current time, Richard, I think the challenge is, to make sure that you've got a very finely tuned ear to the customer. And, and I think that is a challenge that any company has, including Warner Media. And, and what I mean by that is to be very, very um, careful to listen to what customers are telling you. And in the case of Warner, that means how they want to consume stories, uh, where they want to consume stories, how they want to consume stories, uh, all the things that go into that. And I think that's a challenge because there are historical ways that things have been done that have been incredibly successful, and I think some of them will continue to be very successful. But I also think in, in right. these unprecedented times, as John said, consumer behavior is changing, and it will continue to change. And I think the big challenge is not just for myself, but an entire organization to not only respond to that change, but get out in front of it by inventing on behalf of customers. John. Jason, do you think it's still realistic? and we should still launch HBO Max at the end of May. Uh, so many things are being delayed for very understandable reasons. Should this be delayed too? I, I don't think so, Richard. I think it's, it's a fair question, but 
I, I believe that, and John alluded to this a little bit, when you think about what's going on right now for people, not just in America, but all over the world, I, I think that being able to have stories that, are, that mean something to people to be delivered in very convenient ways I think that's maybe even more important now and in May uh, than it might be at other points uh, in our history. So, so I think that's the kind of service that um, you'd really love to see put out there in this world. Uh, and so I think there's no reason to delay that. And thankfully, the team is in a good position to launch that service in May. Right. Uh, one of the Jason, so many productions have been delayed or paused and so many openings have been put off. Uh, later in the year, there's going to be, thank God, when things get back to normal, but there will be an embarrassment of riches uh, waiting for the viewer, won't there? I believe there will. There's certainly, in the case of Warner Media, you're looking at some incredible stories that I'm very excited about, uh, you know, consuming as an individual and a fan, but also sharing with the world. So. You're absolutely right that there is going to be a number of titles across the whole industry, both in film and television, that will be very ready to be released. Uh, now, that said, there's also this current period where all productions have been suspended, uh, which has never happened in the history of media. So, so there is going to be that to, to recognize that there's a disruption in production. And so there, there's a bit of a buildup, but there's also going to be a lot of work to be done to catch up. Uh, John Stankey, uh, but back to you, are there any problems that you've experienced? Is there any likelihood that AT&T will have to throttle uh, network bandwidth for, for consumers in, in any way? The demand on the networks is so huge. Richard, it's, uh, it's interesting to see what's happening in different parts of the globe. And since we're a, we're a worldwide provider, we see a lot of different dynamics. But I will tell you, in the United States, where we have uh, local access broadband networks, um, we're not having that kind of a dynamic or issue. And I think a lot of the reason behind that, frankly, is uh, policies in this country that have been very pro-investment and very well thought out in terms of making sure that there was infrastructure put in place that was scalable and that there were economic models that worked on both sides of the equation, the people who provide the local access and those that use that to get their information out to the end user consumer are very rational and uh, they're very market oriented. And because of that, there's there's been a couple of little snags and points where we've seen some contention here and there, but very quickly you've seen the market work and getting those ironed out over the last couple of weeks. Right. And I think the network's performing incredibly well. Uh, John, you'll forgive me if I give the last word to the new boss, uh, Jason. Uh, Jason, all right, so you're, you're on board. You've got the helm of, of this, the, this Tony group of companies. Can you assure us that CNN uh, will be robust? You will be this stalwart and standard for CNN as we face a very difficult autumn, particularly in a political time. Are you ready for the brickbats? coming your way. <laughs> I think right now is a fantastic reminder to the world about the importance of CNN. So I, I don't think that uh, I can say anything other than please keep doing what you're doing because the service that CNN and the team provides is more critical today than probably it's ever been. And I think that's going to be you know, true in the case of COVID-19. And I think it's going to be true in the case of, of, of an election. Um, these are such important moments for the world. They're important moments for America. And uh, I, I, I've got your back.